Hey, uh, this is Eb. I'm here to show off a guitar, talk a little bit about um, guitar repair, restoration, all that kind of fun stuff, setups. Um, this guitar uh, belongs to a friend of mine, Aaron Garner. Um, he sent it to me for a setup and wanted some bridge work done to it. This is a reissue of the, I think they call them the 1960s series or something, but Gibson started reissuing all kind of different years and for whatever reason they thought it was important to reissue the ones from the 60s that are on so many famous uh, recordings and performances all that kind of stuff um, from that era uh, and the big to me the big wart on all those guitars is um, some of them have plastic bridges injection molded plastic bridges and the reason they did that is because uh, when the Beatles came out in 1963, when they hit the Ed Sullivan Show, they basically went from selling thousands of guitars a year to selling over a million guitars a year. And they're trying to meet demands. Um, so injection molded plastic seemed like a good idea to get, get, get a machines popping out a bunch of those um, as opposed to a, a craftsman uh, working, um, uh, doing woodworking. So... Uh, it, was a, it was a huge mistake. Those in the, of themselves are, are terrible tragedies, and they should all be taken off of the guitars and put with real wood. They're held on with screws, and they rip off and just destroy the guitar. They never sound good. They're just a terrible design. Um, part of that also is they did the adjustable saddle during that era also, and they would have um, these two screws with either like a ceramic or, or rosewood saddle that went across the top. Um, my main problem with, with those, um, I don't have it on here, I've already swapped it out. My main problem with those is all of your sound um, is it, just totally changed. You have this big chunk of heavy material, a chunk of steel, some steel posts and brass inserts and brass nuts, all this extra weight on there. But you also have um, the strings are not directly over... The soundboard, the sound coming from this string in the middle no longer goes down to the bridge and then to the top, through the saddle, through the bridge, through the bridge, to the top and the bridge plate and get it all working together. When you put those on there, those adjustable ones, uh, it goes into that saddle and then travels out and down through the post. And, and to me, there's some muddiness um, in that between the clarity, between the strings. There is also... Uh, Again, just extra weight. Um, this is science that there, there are studies, uh, you can look it up, but the heavier a bridge is, the um, harder it is to get it into motion. It's the difference between a, you know, a train and a hot rod. And you start adding all that weight on there, uh, it just really kills, uh, kills the sound. Um, you can find this out by testing with a, uh, a violin mute on a violin. They just take a little piece of tone wood, a little piece of, um, uh, ebony wood and they clamp it on there and it's not that big and it totally kills it because it weighs the bridge down and the bridge can't be as responsive to all the vibrations, the harmonics, all, all of the, 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 it just kills it. So, um, I measured this one, the thing that was on here and, uh, I'll try to post pictures. I'll definitely have them up somewhere. The, the, on these new ones, the, the bridge, the, all that whole saddle assembly, I wasn't able to get the brass thing out because I didn't take the bridge off. In my opinion, because this is a newer guitar, someone else might want that piece in there later on, so we just put it all in the case. Um, so I had to leave the brass inserts in there. I did not take those out. Um, somebody else can put all that stuff back in with a string change if they want to later on. Normally, I'd prefer to take that out or, or totally make a new bridge. I, I just made a little insert to go in here to hold a saddle. But... Uh, the the saddle, the little piece of metal, the post, and it had genuine uh, just steel um, nuts that goes on bolts on them. Not uh, very heavy. In total, all that stuff weighed uh, nearly 30 grams, um, which is a lot. And uh, the just replacing it back to basically the same amount of material and mass it would have before, and changing those nuts out with some smaller ones. Um, I cut that down to like uh, eight grams. Uh, so like we're talking like a third 
uh, of the of the weight, which it which is huge on sound and responsiveness of a top. And if we're playing guitar, we want it to respond to what we're playing and what we're doing. So I think it's a huge win on this one if, if given the chance to change it out. If it's an old one, uh, but my other argument against those uh, those bridges is the guitar J45 came out in 1945. When they started putting those in in the 60s. That was 20 years later. It was a huge deviation. There was a lot of other deviations on the designs uh, through that time also leading up to it that, that were not improvements, but a, a deviation away from a good design. If you think I'm wrong, uh, go look. The closer they get to 1942, the more valuable they are. Not because they're just because they're more rare. There's something special about those guitars. And as they moved away from that original design, they just don't have the same magic, pizzazz, whatever it is to them. And that's one of the huge things. By the time you get to the end of the 60s, of course, they're way overbuilt. And, uh, I mean, you've got braces in there bigger than my thumb. And those things do not sound any better than a dresser drawer with strings on them. But uh, this, I'm pleased with the overall build and the sound of this instrument. It does have a funny shape on the neck, if, to be honest. But uh, the sound, the responsiveness is, is uh, really nice. So, so this isn't like the late 60s ones that are so heavy. Um, but yeah, back to, back to the bridge real quick. Uh, if you have an old one, I think they should be changed um, to a better design, a true, genuine J45, a true Gibson design, if given the chance um, of one of their good years, not one of the, the poor not one of the poor years. So um, and that's an improvement and it's true and, and, and better for the instrument. And a hundred years from now, people aren't gonna be sad that uh, that thing doesn't have a plastic bridge or an adjustable saddle on it. So I'll just give you a little sample of this, this thing. Um, we also had to do a little bit of work um, out of the factory. The, the nut, oh, I gotta put the cap back on, but the, the nut was all dirty and grimy from all the buffing compound and all that kind of stuff and wouldn't properly adjust the neck. It was very stiff and what I wasn't able to get the neck straight until I cleaned and polished that, which is very important. If you ever feel like it's very hard to turn, um, stop because these will shear off and snap your truss rods in there and that's a way bigger problem than, uh, than, it, than, it, than it's worth than just uh, cleaning things up and, and finding a way to, to address that before breaking something. So I was able to do that with this, needed a little bit of fret work as well. I'll give you a little sound sample. Responsiveness, very beautiful sound, and uh, it's got a lot of punch to it too. If you need to, if you needed to jump and shout, here we go. Uh, this does have some. I believe these are Martin Retro strings on there, so a different sound also. I'm sure it would even get uh, much warmer with some phosphor bronze on there. So, uh, hope you enjoyed this. Hope that was informative. Um, uh, if you like these videos, uh, subscribe down there. I'm going to try to get as uh, many of these out as I can uh, on the interesting guitars I work on and the things I think would be interesting to people uh, to learn more about these guitars. Um, thanks for watching.